coming right there. Right, hey, this week we're going to talk about how to clean the M4, M16, AR family of rifles. Before we do though, I got to give a big shout out to this week's sponsor. You know the deal, we need these sponsors so that we can get you these great videos for free. And you guys should check out Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is a DEAC accredited online school focusing on courses relevant to firearms. So anyone looking to break into a career in the firearms industry or perhaps just expand their horizons in a given area, their online programs allow students the flexibility to earn up to an associate's degree or certificate of firearms training. SDI is DEAC accredited and eligible students can use federal student aid and other funding sources. I feel like this is so much more useful than Broomball or Humanities from the local liberal arts college. I really wish that I knew about them back in the day. All right, so if you're interested, you wanna know more about their current course offerings, you can check them out at sdi.edu. All right, hey, welcome back. All right, um, we have uh, been out at the range filming for a bunch of days now, and my trusty AR-1 rifle She's had a whole bunch of ammo poured through her. That and the fact that I'm like nine, ten classes into this thing. And I legitimately, I don't clean my guns. I don't clean my guns. I say that, but I'm exaggerating, obviously. What I mean when I say that, though, is um, the AR rifle is, think of her as a trashy whore. She likes it hot and wet. Literally, uh, you... Keep putting oil on this gun and shy of you letting dirt, a lot of dirt get inside of it. As long as you keep it well lubricated and you're running good ammo, if it's a high quality AR, it's going to keep running like a champ. You don't have to meticulously keep this thing clean. That said, every once in a while, uh, you really need to clean it. You need to clean it good. Uh, in particularly, uh, your bolt and your bolt carrier group. Um, but there are there are other times if the situation dictates you need to clean your gun clean your gun for example last February trying to chase one of my capsized clients at Operation Valkyrie uh, Basically my kayak was underwater with his his kayak with me with him and my dry box in the back was completely flooded and my TR1 rifle was submersed for literally uh, for hours and hours. So the whole inside of this thing was river mud. So um, to start cleaning it, literally pull out your bolt carrier group, pull out your charging handle, and that's it, guys. Um, as you can punch your other pin here if you want to separate your upper and lower receiver, but basically just shotgunning this gun open, uh, that's good enough. All right, that's good enough. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I... And everybody knows how to clean a gun, or most of you do, but there are certain key points that you want to look uh, look for and inspect on an FNFAL. There are certain points you want to look at and inspect on a AK. Uh, likewise, there are things on an M4 AR series. So right off the bat, I want to talk about uh, things to inspect on your buffer. All right, now, um, am I going to clean my buffer? Well, let's see. All I did was I took the, the ch uh, charging handle, the flat part right there, pushed down the detent to release my buffer and buffer spring. I'm going to sit my stock down here. Now, um, still got oil on it. Make sure it's oil, not water, all right, like from Operation Valkyrie. And I'm going to pull my spring off of it gently. Now, here's what I want you to inspect on. It doesn't matter how dirty this is. does not matter how dirty it is. As long as it's not mud, if you've got a little bit of uh, carbon buildup, a little bit of break-free uh, uh, lubricant buildup on it, does not matter. More important is that you every so often inspect it. Back Now, your buffer, it's got the weight that goes back and forth. This is what cuts down on some of that perceived recoil. It also slows down or speeds up that rate of fire. Uh, how fast a gun cycles, uh, depending on whether you're wanting to speed it up, slow it down. A lot of people go with after action buffers and uh, after market buffers. And this little roll pin right here, you punch out that roll pin and that allows you to take the weight out, change the weight, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. 
The problem though is a lot of people don't replace that roll pin. All right, so I've inspected the buffer. There's, there's nothing wrong with my buffer. We'll see our buffer back into our buffer spring here. Now, uh, before I put it back in the tube, I want to talk about that problem people have. If that pin walks out while the spring is compressed, that pin walks out, it actually locks the spring partially compressed. And now your bolt carrier group, that, that spring's not gonna go all the way back forward again. I sit it right back in here. Now with it locked back in, I gotta turn it, get it just right, my little flat part. In other words, it would lock like two, three inches back in. And then your bolt carrier group is halfway in and out of your gun and you can't break, you can't open the gun up. You can't shotgun the upper receiver from the lower receiver. And it's hilarious to watch at a, usually, you usually see it at a three gun match, right? Um, while I'm here, all right, I'm gonna let my hammer go forward and I'm just inspecting down inside my trigger mechanism. You don't need to be taking your trigger mechanism apart. Understand every time you pull jeweled pieces of metal apart, you're giving them wear and tear in ways that they're not designed to be, that, that, to be maneuvered. Uh, so I, I, I dropped the hammer, I'm inspecting it. Now this has the uh, uh, tactical edge advanced combat trigger in it. Um, but if you're running like, let's say a Timmy trigger or something like that, that's got set screws with, uh, with like Loctite or other ways of gluing the screws, I'm not big on micro adjustments like that because oil solvents get in there, they loosen up those screws and then all of a sudden your rifle shits the bed on you. The trigger doesn't work anymore. Big deal in a three gun match, uh, yeah, you, instead of going to prize table in 10th place, you're going at 60th place. Big deal in combat zone, your rifle shits the bed, yeah, it's a big deal. So I'm not big on crazy crazy triggers and stuff other than that guys low receiver is done all right um keep the mud off of it keep it dry keep it clean um we're not we're not going to get into doing optics um now you can tell just by the way the carbon is built up on the flashlight here this gun's been shot a lot flashlight has to work so i run i run good surefire lights but uh clean the carbon off and I put a little bit of chapstick on it. Serious as a heart attack, I put chapstick on the lens and what you'll find is that carbon then comes off super, super easy. Guys, literally, I'm done, I'm done. I'll put some more chapstick on it and literally that's done. Now, as far as the rest of it, if you see mud, uh, you better not ever see rust. But if, how do you get rust on stuff? These guys trying to clean stuff uh, too well using metal brushes to clean mud off. That's how you take off a lot of your uh, protective coatings. Uh, don't be too rough on this stuff. Don't clean your optics with anything except soapy water or legitimate lens cleaner. Uh, but guys, you're running good, good parts. Upper receiver, outside, everybody worries about the outside of looking pretty. You've got to clean the inside of this thing. Well, we're gonna we're gonna come back to that though because that l legitimately is important. Before we do that though, um, th there's a bunch of parts here that definitely need to be cleaned. I, I take your uh, take your charging handle. There's another roll pin on this one also where your latch is. Whether you're running an extended latch or whether you're running a double latch or whether you're running a classic uh, uh, M16 latch, it still has a pin. Inspect that pin, all right? Um, see if it's walking out, see if it's got wear. I, I have seen them broken and literally one side will be missing and the other side is all that's retaining it. My pin is good. And what am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna drop it into my Sonic Cleaner. All right, uh, if you don't have a Sonic Cleaner, can you clean this stuff uh, manually? Yeah, you can. You take your standard military toothbrush and uh, you clean it, All right? But I'm, I like cleaning with uh, solvent if possible. I'm gonna drop it in my Sonic Cleaner. 
Hey, before I get into the bolt carrier group, I'm gonna take a quick break. I gotta wash my hands and I'm gonna let YouTube slap you right in the face with a commercial. All right, hey guys, welcome back. Um, before we left, I was talking about there's two ways to clean things. One is physically, one is chemically. So physically would be using that toothbrush to, crub, uh, to scrub the carbon or like brass brushes, okay? That's brass brush or plastic brush. You're physically scrubbing the dirt off. The other way to do it is with solvent. Uh, water, for example, is a solvent for a lot of things, okay? Uh, the military uses what's called break free or the other name for it is CLP clean lubricates protects what they mean by that is instead of you having a separate bottle of carbon solvent a separate bottle of copper solvent a separate bottle of gun oil they mix it all together is it a great carbon solvent no it's good enough is it a great copper solvent no but it's good enough is it a great lubricant no, but it's good enough. What it is, is it allows our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines to only have to carry one bottle uh, and it does everything for it. So you can literally clean, use, use break free CLP, whatever you want to call it, uh, to break up the carbon, uh, to clean the guns. And uh, then you can leave a light coat of this on the gun and it lubricates all your parts, stuff like that. Now, certain guns like my my uh, precision rifles, my SR-25, my bolt guns, even my Glocks, I run gun grease on them. But for my ARs, everything else, I literally, I just run break free CLP. That's, I've tried everything guys. I've tried defrog lube, I've, I've tried LSA, I've tried all the great products that come and go. And they're okay, they're okay. Now, you notice I have a, um, a Hornady Sonic cleaner right here. It's solvent, plus it uses ultrasonic waves to break a lot of the carbon free. And um, I like to clean with gear that I have in the field so everything stays the same. So I'm using my, my same um, cleaning kits that I've carried for years, all my parts, everything basically stays the same. But if I have access to it, if you have access to it, I, I can't recommend enough uh, you using a sonic cleaner, uh, especially if, if uh, you've got a really, really dirty gun. I gotta put on my old man reading glasses here. Um, bolt carrier group. This puppy's nasty, guys. Literally, this thing's nasty. Bolt carrier group on the left side, you pull out that retaining pin, firing pin, retaining pin. It's, guys, it's uh, literally, it's just a, uh, Carter pin is all it is. I'm going to drop it in my solvent light tap. That's a butt fugly firing pin right there. That son of a gun is crapped out. Um, doesn't do you any good to inspect this stuff now because you can't see it. Push in lightly on your, your bolt. Turn your uh, bolt cam sideways. Toss it into your solvent. Pull your, your bolt straight out of your, your um, bolt carrier. Toss the bolt carrier in there, nasty. Now there's one more piece that uh, a lot of grime gets inside the bolt. And I understand a lot of people are taught not to take the extractor off of the bolt. I do it and uh, how I actually do it is I use my firing pin. All right, I'm gonna pull my firing pin back out. That's some nasty stuff. Take your firing pin, every gun has one, right? And push in lightly on that uh, extractor retaining pin take that pin drop it into my solvent and then I'm gonna lift out my extractor uh, some of them depending on the gun will have a little rubber donut on top of the spring some of them will have a little rubber ding tent that runs down inside the spring so long as the spring is present it's good. This one has all three. It's got the rubber detent down the center, it's got the spring, and then it's got a donut that runs around the side. Little extra love. Am I saying you have to have that? No, I'm not, because it's actually just one more point of failure. I'm gonna drop that in, and that got the awful, ugly bolt carrier group right there, that, that bolt. I'm gonna drop that in. I'm gonna shut this down. I'm gonna grab my lid. I'll put it on and I'm gonna press start. Now, 
it'll it'll run for uh, 5, 10, 15 minutes. You may have to run it two or three times. Uh, what does it mean, though? It means you've got enough time to go outside and go upstairs and make yourself a quadruple espresso. I'll see you back in a minute. I heard they snuck, an, they, they snuck another commercial in on you. Boy, those are some silly wabbits right there. All right, so we got our coffee. We've ran our sonic cleaner. We got our parts uh, clean. Mind you, they're not clean. I, a lot of the carbon has loosened up on them. You're still going to have to wipe all this stuff down. Now, I'm going to start with the, the bolt, carrier, uh, bolt carrier itself first. All right, because they're, and I'm, I'll, I'll cover a little bit parts you need to clean because here's the deal. Guys in the military, they had to clean stuff so that it could get inspected by a first sergeant. Understand, most first sergeants and sergeant majors are full-blown morons and do not even understand how these guns work. I, I, I'm just being honest with you. I can say that because I was a sergeant major. All right, um, and unfortunately, a lot of my peers do not know how these guns work. So guys would clean all the carbon and everything. They would have to have the outside of this bolt carrier group insanely spotless. This thing would be insanely spotless. Unfortunately, um, I could have this thing covered with a, a 16th of an inch of carbon and it wouldn't matter. You wouldn't even scratch the carbon when you put it back into the gun. The only parts that touch on this gun uh, when it's inside the gun is this rail right here and the other rail on the other side. It literally rides like railroad tracks forward and backwards inside your upper receiver. All right, the, these sides back here really aren't touching anything. So right here, right here, those need to be clean. And guys, honestly, to clean them, that, 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 and that. And I, literally, I'm done. Literally, I could wipe it with my t-shirt out at the range and those four parts are clean enough. That's not the part that matters on this gun, right? Uh, bolt carrier group, where the bolt rides inside, where those gas rings come in, uh, what happens is your gas comes down to get your gas impingement tube because this is not a blowback gun. This, this is a gas impingement system. Gas comes down your gas tube, it goes through your gas key, and it comes into the little chamber, little space uh, that is locked with that bolt. The explosion, the gas coming in there, forces the bolt carrier back a little bit. It unlocks the camming pin, which in turn unlocks the bolt lugs from inside your chamber and it cycles the weapon. So what needs to be clean is in the inside of this tube and down in the bottom. So, and that's why I like a sonic cleaner, guys. Sonic cleaner gets, it gets in there. The sonic waves go everywhere inside. So if you don't have access to that, one of the things you can do is you can take a, your, a small flathead screwdriver, uh, preferably brass, right? You'll notice I have a, the, my, the clean kits I like actually come with a, a brass punch and you can sit it down in there and literally just go around uh, just a couple of times and you'll see I'm still, and that's wet from before. I probably should have cleaned it out. First. A little bit of air, get all my solvent out of it, all right? But when I run it around, if it's, if it's just completely caked with carbon, I mean, you'll be coming up with just chunks of it. It comes out almost looking like gravel. Uh, but the reality is it's not there. It's just not there because the Sonic Cleaner does so well. Clean the inside of that. Now, I want to caution you, though, that you do not want to overclean this because you scrubbing on it, because I've seen infantry guys, uh, support units, uh, unfortunately, drill sergeants do it to pass inspections, is they'll put a bore brush or a chamber brush on a drill and they'll drill parts out to polish them. They're taking things out of tolerances and then they wonder why the guns jam when they're, when they're trying to do qualifications. Clean it, but don't over clean it. The other thing you want to inspect on the bolt carry is your bolt key, all right? Most of them have staked uh, screws. Just check it. It should not have any wiggle room in it at all. This is a tactical edge gun. This thing is badass. I'm not going to have any issues with it. 
All right, glasses back on. I want my bolt. All right, that's an ugly puppy right there. Guys, this is the most important piece right here when it comes to uh, having a gun that will cycle reliably for you. Not the barrel. Uh, barrel's important for accuracy. The barrel is not important for reliability of the gun. And there are people like, well, you know, you got to have a combat trigger. You got to have this. On. Dude, you can put a 20-pound trigger in your gun. It will still run. All right. Um, I got to get all my solvent out of there. All right, once I got it dry so I can actually see it, now, now is the time you come to inspect it. Right off the bat, uh, we're gonna touch on the things that fail right away, all right? Um, you will see people break lugs off of their gun. When you break a lug off of your bolt face here, the reason why that jams the gun is more likely than not that broken lug is still sitting inside the chamber of the gun and then the next lug can't lock in there. But once you get it out of the chamber, if you have a broken lug, the gun will still run. It's not the best thing to do, but if you're in the middle of a gunfight, get that broken piece out of there, it will run. Inspect them on your gun. Better to find a hairline crack now than after the gun is already broken. So I'm looking, that's why my old man eyes, I've got to put on my glasses, I have no broken lugs. They're starting to get a little wear on it because I've got about 15, 20,000 rounds through this gun now. Uh, she's a champ. Now, more important than anything else though is right back here, you have got your three gas rings. Now some, some manufacturers use one continuous uh, ring, but for the most part, including this tactical edge gun, there's three rings. Now, they have a little space on them there's a space on my first ring right there. Space on my third ring is very close to it. And then if I turn it around, I can find the space for my second ring is over here. Uh, they just can't be lined up because if all three spaces are lined up, it's allowing gas to flow completely through. So what do you do if they're too lined up? Literally take your fingernail, pinch one of them down, and just rotate the other ones. Get them, get them away from each other. I'll rotate it a little bit and I don't want you bending them or nothing, but they should float freely. All right. That's it. Should float freely and you've got uh, roughly equal space there. Now, same thing on the bolt. Everybody wants to make this thing insanely clean. The bolt face has to be insanely clean. All right, you don't have to remove the ejector pin. You don't have to mess with nothing like that. All right, um, but I want you to inspect right where, uh, right where the pin goes for retaining the extractor because you'll see cracks there. But notice how pretty and black that black anodized that bolt is. It's because the bolt doesn't touch anything in the bolt carrier except in just two places. The first is this ring right here. All right, so again, that should be shiny and clean. You do not scrub it with a wire brush. Wipe it off, wipe it off. It's already clean from me using the solvent on it. If you start cleaning that too much, you're, you're getting, again, you're, you're taking things out of tolerance. The other place that you, uh, it touches is right where these gas rings are. All right, now, you'll see even, half, even after running it through the solvent tank for a while, I still have a significant amount of carbon built up here uh, on the back of my bolt. Why? I, this is only the second time I've cleaned it in over 20,000 rounds, right? So I'm not joking, guys. I can legitimately take my brass screwdriver here and I can actually work piles of carbon off of this thing. It doesn't matter. I'm not hurting. You hear that crunch? That's me knocking, oh, that's some nasty, nasty carbon right there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. It does not affect the action of the gun. Uh, but what it is, is it's a good way for you to basically tell, you know, hey, this guy's not giving this gun a lot of love here lately, right? Can you have enough buildup of carbon right here 
to interfere with the action of the gun. Not really. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Keep it clean and uh, the gun will serve you well. Uh, but this is one place that instead of just doing uh, chemically, I do I clean it physically. Good enough for me. Ah, that puppy's good to go right there. Now, to add to that, I want my extractor. Uh, pull out. I came up with firing pin first, fishing. I'm going to just wipe it down. What do you have to inspect on a firing pin? Nothing. All right, unless she's broken. Uh, firing pins don't wear out, guys. They don't. All this stuff that you've got to put a titanium firing pin in your gun so you get a faster lock time. Uh, brother, if you're shooting that fast that you're outrunning your firing pin, man, you are Matt Burkett. You're the man because I can't do it. All right. Um, cam pin. Nothing to check on a cam pin, guys. I've never, ever, not one time seen a cam pin break. I'm sure somebody in the comment section will tell me that they have. Get all the carbon off the sides of it, but it's very, very easy to clean. I'm still looking for my extractor. I come up with my charging handle. Wipe off my large amounts of solvent first so I don't spray it all over my good parts here. But for the most part, air, clean it out. Good to go. Again, if you haven't checked that pin that I was talking about, that's that rolled pin right there, guys. It's flush on that side. It's flush on that side. This is a sexy gun. All right, before I get into uh, putting the bolt carrier group back together, I'm going to let YouTube slap you one more time with a commercial. Here's the deal, guys. You don't like these commercials any more than I do. You watch the commercials, I get paid. All right? So anyways, hang out with me a few more minutes longer. All right? I love you. Welcome back. Hey, uh, while you were gone, I dug the extractor out of the solvent tank. All right? So uh, I'm going to put the lid back on that so we don't get any uh, dust and stuff in there. All right, um, to put this puppy back together, again, I'm going to put my glasses back on. Um, take that bolt, uh, your bolt. We've already talked about how to inspect it. Uh, le legitimately, guys, clean it. But before you put stuff back together, I know you, you're in a hurry to get out and go do power drink and hit the bars. I got that. End of the op, you come back in, you've got to be disciplined enough to clean, take care of your gear, get everything ready so it's ready the next time you need it. So that's what we're doing. We take a couple minutes, we do it right now. Check my bolt lugs, I check my rings, my gas rings are good. And, and here's the deal, I've actually seen guns break. For example, my SR25, the bolt in my SR25 actually broke right here, R literally right there. It had a little ring on it, little milled out spot. That was the weak point, it actually broke. Uh, I had, two extractor pins, retaining pins, break on a different SR25 Mark 11. Uh, that was back in 94, and uh, they worked the bugs out. But it's still, I have seen uh, things break. So anyways, take your bolt, you take that, ex, uh, your extractor. Places to inspect on an extractor is, they don't necessarily, if they're gonna break, they're gonna break right where your holes are right here. Um, if they're going to break, they're going to break where the spring actually breaks itself. Guys want to pull the spring out so they can inspect the spring. Guys, how springs break is you pulling them in and out. Don't leave it. If the spring is properly retained, it's properly retained. Give it a look. If it looks fine, it's fine. All right. Um, but I'm looking for cracks on both sides of this. It's fine. The part that wears, though, doesn't necessarily break, but wears is right up here, the rim that actually grabs onto your bullet. All right. So uh, you'll get a buildup of carbon there. I don't have a buildup of carbon there because I just put it through a sonic cleaner. But that's about the only spot that I ever clean decent on my extractor. Literally, take your toothbrush or take your, your brass rod if you've got it, run it through one time, and you're done. You're done. You want to hit it with your toothbrush a little bit. 
done. But again, uh, I have access to a sonic cleaner, we're good. Properly sit your uh, extractor in there, push, line up the hole, take your extractor pin. I've seen these break. Push it in, push it in, level it out on both sides, and my bolt's done. All right, take your bolt. Now, I, the holes got to line up with your keyhole right here. When you put it in, slide it in, and basically it can, well, the holes on both sides, which way is it? Think, think it through, dumbass, and what you'll see is the ex extractor has got to be on that side of the gun because that's where the ejection port is. News flash is your cam pin will only fit in one way. If it doesn't fit in that way, turn your bolt around, it'll fit in the other. All right. I go to drop my cam pin in, turn it sideways, and it's fine. All right. I line it up. Now, notice I said you had to turn it 90 degrees. That's to line up the hole in the middle of my cam pin so then I can drop in my, uh, my, Firing pin, my firing pin will drop right in, slides in. You then retain the, ref the firing pin with that same little carter pin that we pulled out earlier. Slide it, get it up in there. Tight little puppy. And there we go. She's in. Make sure your firing pin is, uh, your carter pin is in far enough. Now, as far as inspecting the unit by itself, remember I mentioned the part that wears out of those gas rings. Uh, just technique the military uses. Basically, if, you're, if you take your bolt carrier group and you can stand it up and it stays, your, your gas rings are good enough. If it falls down like that, see how it's up? But if the gas rings are wore out, the gun will actually fall down. This one easily stays up. I can't get it to balance on this mat. Does not fall. Those gas rings are plenty strong enough. Piece of cake. Bolt carrier groups done, guys. Charging handles done. Outside of the guns done. Now, inside of the bore, you got to take care of that so you have accuracy. But as far as functionality and reliability of the gun, the biggest part for you to clean is the chamber itself. So um, I, I don't normally, when clean the gun, I don't normally bore scope it, but I want you guys to see what a butt fugly bore looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my bolt, uh, my upper receiver over here and move my coffee cup a little bit. Now what I have here is, this is made by um, Teslong. It is a, it's a digital bore scope. I'm making sure that it's powered up right now. All right. And I'm going to kind of put it so you guys can see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this puppy straight down the barrel. I don't know if you guys can see that good enough. But if I move my coffee cup, what you're going to see is as I move this thing down the barrel, Guys, a lot of that looks like rust. That's not rust. A lot of that's copper, copper buildup. Hold on. Make it so you guys can see it. All right. You'll get copper buildup on this gun. And I know it's, it's nasty. Now, remember, what was the last thing that just went through this thing? A bullet, right? Now, what's behind every bullet? Behind every bullet is that explosion. So basically it lays down a layer of copper in the lands and grooves and then it lays down a layer of carbon buildup and you keep shooting, you keep shooting and it does, your, your barrel will keep getting more and more fouled. Pretty ugly indeed. Now, right here though, I'm going to bring it back so you guys can actually see my chamber. All right, let me see if you guys are on it right now. All right, right about there. You guys can see those locking lugs in the chamber, all right? See how butt ugly those things are? They they look like uh, they look like treads on a tank covered with mud. There is no mud in this gun. This is all carbon buildup. And the problem with carbon buildup is my locking bolts 
my lock and lugs on my bolt have got to slide into those slots and lock. And that's when your gun gets sluggish, is it's having a hard time getting those lock and lugs in there and locking in that chamber, All right? So that's what we've got to clean. We've got to get those lugs so that they'll go in and that they'll twist and lock into place. So right there is where you need to do a lot of your focusing. I'm gonna pull this out and sit it off to the side, turn it off. Uh, I, guys, I inspect my guns, uh, bores on my precision rifles, on this son of a gun right here, not so much. All right, now, again, remember I mentioned there's two ways to clean things, all right, chemically and physically. So I take a cleaning rod on my precision rifles, I would not use a multi-section rod because when you're putting pressure and it bends, wherever these seams are, that's, you understand that's metal that's scraping down my barrel. So I run a one piece rod on my precision rifles, on my ARs, I don't give a shit because I, I need something that I can bring in with me into the field. All this breaks down, all this other stuff, it all goes in my nice little tan kit right here. All right, so, uh, Run some brake free down there, whatever. Uh, spray your CLP down the barrel, lube it up, all right? Uh, rule of thumb for me is basically every 20, every 20 rounds of ammunition I've shot, I will run my uh, brass brush down one time, all right? Now, I said I've gone like 20,000 rounds. Am I gonna sit here and count how many 20? No, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, give it 10, 20 strokes, all right, and uh, then start running patches through it. But run the solvent, let the solvent sit for a while, and then run your, br run your brush into it. Run that brass brush through, pull it back out. Oh, I actually pulled it right off the end. Do that five, ten times, and then after that, I'm going to put my handle back on. I actually pulled my handle off the end of my rod here. All right. Once you've done that, I like using it. What's called the jag. Uh, there are all sorts of different brushes guys will use. Here it is, right here. And again, you can run. Your choices for running brushes is basically guys will run either a eyelet like a sewing needle, and they push your standard M16 cleaning patch through it. I prefer to use a jag. I just call me. Uh, old school, that's what I've always done with my precision rifles. The problem with the Jag though is you have to have a patch that is exactly the correct size. Okay, invest, buy uh, some 5.56 five, uh, patches and you'll be good to go. Whatever size patch, whatever works for you, I don't care. Uh, put a little bit more oil on this puppy. Yep. Nope, not that one, right here. I'm gonna run that in, and literally guys, I'm just pushing it through. It'll come out the other end. Once it's out, I pull it. Comes off automatic, done. Now, let that sit, go back to the brush, scrub for a while, and then uh, put, this, uh, put the jag back on and start doing dry patches. Push dry patches through, until it gets clean. I clean the bore first, all right? Then I save the chamber for last. Once I get to doing the chamber, guys, I'm serious, that's the important puppy right there. Um, let's do the chamber, but before we do, we got time for one more commercial and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. I'll see you back in a minute. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, the chamber, most important part for me, Honest, I like using just shop rags, or uh, in this case, I've got, a, I've got a roll of paper towels. I put way too much uh, oil and solvent in there. I actually solvent the crap out of it, let it sit, hit it from a bunch of different angles, work it around, and then literally, I get my pinky in there and I move that puppy around. That's it. Narrow end of the toothbrush, get narrow end of my toothbrush, work it around, come in from that direction, come in from this direction. All right. Now, 
that's going to let you get a lot of your uh, a lot of the crappy carbon buildup out. That's some nasty stuff right there, guys. All right. I'm going to spray the whole inside of the upper receiver because you'll have a lot of buildup on the inside right there. Doesn't affect anything. Uh, you would have to do 100,000 rounds for it to get thick enough back here. But clean gun's a happy gun. I'm going to clean enough of this back out here. Makes it prettier for my bolt carrier group to move through. What I don't want you to do is be digging in there and bend your gas rod, uh, your gas tube. Gas tube sits way up inside there. It's a thin little tube. My pointer right there. You need to make sure you don't have uh, tons of carbon built up, but where I've seen people screw up is they'll get in there with like uh, cleaning patches and stuff and they end up leaving the strings from the cleaning patch up underneath. Um, they'll be trying to dig in there with a, with a toothbrush so hard they end up bending their, their gas tube. Guys, do not, uh, don't, just don't overclean these things. Do not overclean your AR. Get back in my chamber. Now, to get my actual chamber itself, they make for the M16, they make what's called a chamber brush. Absolutely right. You guys are, you guys are catching on. You really are, man. There ain't no fooling you guys at all. So I'm going to thread my chamber brush on. I need two sections. Just I, I, makes it easier for me to hold it with my hand. All right, again, slide your brush up in there, get it down in the chamber, and all you're doing is you're turning that puppy. Turn it around, and I'm basically using my chamber brush. Turn it. All I'm doing is cleaning the inside of my chamber right there. When I'm done with it, if you have a chamber brush that's extremely wore out, those are good to have. I wrap uh, clean patches around the outside of them and I run them through my chamber again. All right. I'm going to take a couple of my patches, wrap them around, and I'm going to run them back up into my chamber. And I'm just swabbing the inside of my chamber. That's all I'm doing. Clean my chamber. Nice and clean. All right. Last step, if you're putting this puppy up for a while, if you're putting it up for a while, you want to wipe all your port part, wipe all your parts down with a light coat of uh, protective oil, whether it's COP, whatever. But other than that, remember, this is an AR. This is not a bolt action rifle. So whether you're lubing the inside of the barrel or not, whether which it's good for the barrel to leave a light coat of oil on it um, at a minimum you've got to you have got to lubricate this bolt carrier group i do it while it's in the gun put in that charging handle charging handle back in they're out sit it bolt carrier group inside pins are out sit my front pin first back pin. I'm only doing the front pin. I'm going to double check. Everything's good. All right. Back pins out. Now to lubricate, literally guys, pull it back, hold it just like that. So I can see the, the bolt is cracked open a little bit. And what you've got is I now have access to my bolt lugs. I have access to the space right here between the face of the bolt and the bolt carrier. And there's these two little gas holes right here. That's where the gas comes out of the, the side of the bolt carrier. All I do is spray a little bit right there, let it run in. I spray a little bit right there and cycle it a couple times. Running down the side of the gun because I was sloppy. Now, I know I've got 
guys on the internet that are going to say that's not how I was turned that's not how I was taught how to clean a gun in the military. Carl, you're you messed up. You didn't do a white glove inspection. Carl, you're a terrible person because you uh, you only clean certain parts, and that's not what my drill sergeant looked for. Honest guys, I could care less. If you got nothing else out of this video, I want you to get that there are certain parts you need to inspect. There are certain parts you do not need to overclean because you wear them out. And at the end, remember you have got you literally have got to keep this thing lubricated in uh, particularly the bolt and the bolt carrier group uh complete other than that guys that's it this puppy will run like a champ we're good all right uh that's all i got this week i hope you got something out of it um, I, I want to give thanks to um, uh, Teslong for uh, hooking us up with the, uh, the digital bore scope. Um, again, the gun by Tactical Edge, my sexy cleaning kits by Pro Shop Products. I've been carrying these things, Afghanistan, everywhere else for a long time. They custom make them uh, for different weapon systems. Kind of cool. And big shout out to our sponsor of this week. And um, thanks to my patrons also. You guys are badass. You're help, help me keep this channel afloat. That's all I got. You got questions? I'll leave them below. You know I read them. I'll see you all next time. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.